show and this morning <laughs> want to make sure that okay my body is transmitting okay so good morning we're on the treadmill this morning and I just kind of hoping the show starting so blessings of learning <laughs> so hi I'm coach Raquel and welcome 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 to finding happy let's walk and talk Right, so that's the season where we let's walk and talk. Uh, where I'm on my treadmill and having conversations or just sharing my thoughts on uh, whether it's the topic of the day or it is something that comes to my spirit to talk about. Um, but today, in finding happy, let's walk and talk. We're going to be talking about the whole Perkle Dollar um, admission. Confession, transformation, whatever you want to call it. That's what we're gonna, that is what we're going to be talking about today. So thank you so much for joining me. You're listening to me on YouTube video. I'm Coach Raquel and it's my absolute pleasure to engage with you. And so I hope you're having a wonderful, beautiful, amazing day. I hope when you work when you woke up this morning, you are happy to be alive. And if you aren't, I hope you get there soon. Yeah? Um, I think personally it's okay to feel what you feel. I don't think there's one prescribed way we should feel and wake up in the morning or at any point in time. I have learned to honor my process, to honor my feelings, my thoughts, my pain, my struggles, my challenges. At least that's what we call it in the English language, right? But for me, it's just life happening and I am learning to honor all of it, the good times, the not so good times, the, you know, it's all called life, right? <laughs> so, I'm just thankful today, I'm very, very grateful, and um, now I'm going to get to walking with you and talking with you. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and just subscribe if you're not yet, if you've not yet subscribed to my channel, to this channel. Um, please support us and um, let's, if you have thoughts or ideas or topics you'd like to talk about, questions you'd like to answer, please by all means share them and I will definitely um, respond to you. So let's get started now. ChristianPost.com posted this article written by um, Leonardo Blair, senior features reporter. It reads Televangelist. Creflo Dollar says teachings on tithing not correct, but won't apologize to followers. Challenging popular evangelical belief. Controversial televangelist Creflo Dollar, one of America's most flamboyant proponents of the prosperity gospel, has renounced tithing and all his previous teachings on the subject as not correct. He also urged his followers to throw away every book, every tape, and every video I ever did on the subject of tithing, but says he will not apologize for his error. In a Sunday sermon billed, The Great Misunderstanding, the founder and senior pastor of the nearly 30,000 member World Changers Church International headquartered in College Park, Georgia, said he is aware that his, de his declaration will cause him to lose friends and invitations to speak at other churches. However, he said he is convinced, after studying Romans 6.14, that tithing is an Old Testament concept that has been retired in that has been retired in the dispensation of grace in which Christians should now be living. I want to start off by saying that I'm still growing and the teachings that I've shared in times past on the subject of tithing were not correct. Dollar began in his June 26 sermon. And today I stand in humility to correct some things that I've taught for years and believed for years, but could never understand it clearly because I had not yet been confronted with the gospel of grace, which has made the difference. I won't apologize because if it wasn't for me going down that route, I wouldn't have ended up where I am now, he continued. 
But I will say that I have no shame at all at saying to you, throw away every book, every tape, and every video I ever did on the subject of tithing, unless it lines up with this. Tithing, giving 10% of one's income to the church, is viewed as a biblical commandment by a majority of evangel evangelicals. But only an estimated 13% engage in the practice, a recent study shows. The research also indicates that about half of, evangel half of evangelicals have given away less than 1% of their income annually. Tithing has long been a contentious issue in many churches across America. In 2014, our pastor refused to host the funeral of a 93-year-old woman, telling her family that she was not current with her tithe to the church. In 2018, Grammy-winning gospel singer Marvin Winans and the Perfecting Church in Detroit, Michigan, were sued by his former housekeeper who claimed she was fired by sorry, she was fired for refusing to pay tithes from her 18,000 a year salary. In an op-ed for the Gospel Coalition in 2017, Thomas Schreiner the James Buchanan Harrison Professor of New Testament Interpretation and Associate Dean for Scripture and Interpretation at the Southern, the Southern Baptist Theological Ser Seminary in Louisville, Kentucky, outlined several reasons why tithing is not a requirement for Christians. The commandments stipulated in the Mosaic, co uh, Mosaic Covenant are no longer in force for believers. Some appeal to the division between the civil, ceremonial, and moral law to support tithing. Yet these divisions, I would observe, are not the basis Paul uses when addressing how the law applies to us today. And even if we were, and even if we use these distinctions, tithing is clearly not part of the moral law. Shrana explained in part, it's true the moral norms of the New Testament are still in force today, and we discern them from the law of Christ in the New Testament, but tithing is not among these commands. In his sermon, Dollar um, appeared to agree with this interpretation, telling his congregants that they were not living under Mosaic law, but under grace. Religion is sustained by two factors, fear and guilt. And if it's one subject that the church has used for a long time to keep people in fear and guilt, it is that subject of tithing, Dollar said. And it was, sorry, and it has to be corrected and it's got to be corrected now. I may lose some friends. Preachers may not invite me no more. But I think I've already been through that, so it doesn't matter. And that's the end of the article. Now here, here's my take on this now. I'm going to you now just share my thoughts. You're worth it. So let's talk about this thing with purple dollar now, yeah? So <laughs> as per usual, everyone has their opinions and their thoughts that they're sharing and good, good for them. Who else do you? You have a thought. That's fantastic. I um it's good to, to be able to um, contribute to dialogue, I think. Have, um, have an opinion. You can share it. As long as I, the only thing I don't like is when people start using their opinions to. Are we declining? Oh Lord, we're declining. <laughs> and this is my first um, session where <laughs> I'm doing an incline. Oh, pray for me! <laughs> I am doing the darn thing anyway. <laughs> this just threw me off all the way up. Ah, I can do this. I can do this. Okay? And I'm not doing less than 10 minutes. I can do this. <laughs> okay. So this is what I think. We have to create an enabling environment for people to become transformed. For people to evolve. For people to say, I made a mistake. For people to say, hmm, 
that thing that I felt, that I believed in so wholeheartedly, has changed. I don't believe that anymore. Yes, personally for me, I would have told anybody to discard anything they purchased. That's on you. Yeah? When you place an order, when you make a purchase, that's on you. You chose to know and no one has a gun to your head. No one took away your freedom. No one harmed your family. You made a purchase. I don't think he has the right to tell people whether to keep or discard what resources they purchased. That's on them. But I do believe he has the right to come out and say I've grown. My mind has changed. I believe something different today. He has to have the right to do that. Because we all do. Right? And I said nothing for it. Because I never released. At least he did it. He did it. There's some of us who whose whose belief system have changed or has at least become enlightened or in questioning and we don't say a word. And we let things remain as is. When we really should have come out and say, I don't believe that anymore. A lot of us are too coward. You see, for me, I like the truth. I like truth. Give me truth all day, every day, anytime, wake me up in the middle of the night for truth. Truth gives me a, a fair chance. Truth gives me a choice. Truth allows me to be able to use my information. Knowledge is currency. Yes? If the man is feeling that hiding is no longer what he believes in, that's for him to believe. And he has a right to that belief. He has a right to change, to grow, to advance, to become transformed. He has that right, and no one should take away his right from him. Now their pastor is talking about he should refund. Refund what? Refund what? Again, was anyone held up to make a purchase? For all I know, the people who supported him still believe what they believe. Maybe his belief has changed. How does he know theirs hasn't? He's just coming out to say, hey, I shared this with you before. I'm changing it. The rest is on you. The rest is on you. You want to remain there, remain. You want to change with me, change. But this is where I'm at. And I think more pastors, instead of coming out um, talking about him need to refund, why don't you come out and talk about the lies you can tell? Hmm? Why don't you take this time to go review your own to see what confessions you need to make and make them in the interest of the people. Hmm? In the interest of the people we serve. You see, let me tell you what I don't like. What I can't stand. What I find oppressive is where people behave as though they're perfect. Like, oh, you're, you're accusing me of something? I can't be accused. I'm going to ignore you because I can't be accused. I'm not going to engage in a dispute with you. I'm perfect. I'm perfect. Yes, no, that is what I, I find oppressive. The lies, the pretension, or pretense. Yeah? The pretense that you are all close and close and more bagger. You understand what I'm saying? It's the lies we need to uncover. He said something that I thought was more potent than his admission. Religion uses fear and guilt. And it's true. I am still fighting, right? To get past it myself. Because I have allowed religion to put me in fear. Fear. I can't even believe what my God is telling me, my instinct, because I'm afraid. Because of belief. Hmm? I'm afraid because of belief, because of religion. Am I going to go to hell? Hmm? That's the room of anything is hell. Yes? And this Bible, this Bible, I mean, if anything, this situation is really exposing how we practice our divinity, how we practice service divine, our purpose. Yes? Why do we need some book to tell us who our body is and how to worship him? 
Why? Why do we need that? I think that's problematic. Why doesn't my natural God give me instinct not tell me who my God is? I don't have to worship him. My love. I don't need the Bible. I don't need a preacher to tell me who my God is and how to serve my God. I don't need a preacher to tell me to invest in divine purpose. I already know. Because everything I have, God gave it to me. So I don't need somebody to tell me how much to give back to him. I'm not giving him 10%. I'm giving him everything of that. I think we're in a time where religiosity is being exposed. I think God is using all of these things that are happening to show us who we are, to show us what we've been doing, how we've been performing. I think if he made a mistake to say give God 10 or contribute 10 to him doing work for God that you're benefiting from, 10% is very small. Please, we spend more in the stores, what do they do for us? So, I don't know why people are making this such a bad thing when I think it's honor. Yeah. What is 10% to give to God? If you really believed in his ministry and you believe that he overall was serving God, what is 10% to give back to that to send ministry? The government requires taxes, right? Yes, it does. In order to operate and serve us. I believe. Right? I, I believe that that's the core intention, the, the primary, the real, the good intention. I'm not talking about what they actually need to do. Yes. And we give to them. So the ministers are out here doing the work that you believe is God's work. What is 10%? What is 10%? Hmm? And this grace and law, grace and law, grace and law, again, why are we relying upon a book written by mankind? Human beings who are flawed and, as you say, sinful. Why are we relying upon them to determine who our God is, how he looks, how we serve him, what we do? Are we zombies? Are we robots? Can we not think for ourselves? Oh, come on. Come on. Hmm? Why are you allowing fear and guilt? Control you hmm? to submit, to cause you to submit to systems. I think we've got to be better than this. And so, for me, I believe it's my responsibility to learn who my God is, to learn first to learn me. So here are my three, three tips that I live by. First, I learn who I am. Because a lot of us out here don't have a clue. And we're, and we're waiting for the pressure of dollars to tell us who we are, who our God is, and how we're supposed to relate to our God. Come on. So number one, know who you are, who you truly are. Not what you look like, not what you sound like, not what you do, but who you are, which means a great. And number two, learn God for yourself. Establish a better relationship with a God of your own understanding. And three, take accountability for your actions. You are responsible for the purchases you made, for the things you believe, for the things you do. You're responsible. First of all, is not responsible. You are. So, that's three, learn you, with a relationship with a God of your own understanding. And take accountability. Yeah? Take accountability for your own relationship with God. And with that said, I wish you an amazing day. I gotta get off this thing. <laughs> Woo! Thinking Christ is coming. Oh my God. But I'm so proud of myself. I did it. I did it. I did it. Yes. I did it. Have a good day. Goodbye.